<laughs> Would you look at that? Somebody else with some Legend gear luggage, and sure enough, it's a Honda CB650R, another Neo Sports Cafe. Look, he's rocking the multiple Molly patch stuff on the bag as well. Brilliant feature, that. Anyway, with the Gross Glockner out of the way, and the bike refueled, that leaves me just enough time to get back up there in the cool, have a cup of tea, and then start heading back to Innsbruck. So, as of now, we will be heading in the direction of home. <laughs> Goodbye, Austria. Oh. Yeah, see, I beeped you goodbye. Then last time over the Gorsk Lock now, and thankfully, I don't have to pay again, I just show my ticket and on we go. Findeck, and we're off. Last time over the mountain and on the search for a cup of coffee at the top. It's coffee with a view, please, which does mean without kicking the arse out of it, I do need to get a wriggle on a little bit. We've still got a few kilometers to cover today. Well, actually, not all that many kilometers, but just the roads are so wriggly. comes the weather, rolling in as promised. Apparently it's supposed to be patchy rain and thunderstorms by two o'clock this afternoon, which with it being 20 past one, isn't very far away. Take it wide, mate. Why don't you? Buzz is on patrol. It had to be the one time that I really gave it the beans to overtake a van, didn't it? That's <laughs> I don't know if they looked unimpressed or uninterested. Oh, it's freezing cold up here again. Unsurprisingly, it didn't get any warmer while I was down the bottom. So, to realize that, this tunnel, when you pass under this tunnel, that's the border between Tyrol and Salzburg. 
good to know. So we're now in Salzburg. Marvellous. A lot less snow in Salzburg. Poof, starts with toe on the floor for the first time. I haven't done it for so long. Made me jump a bit. notice that that ice water washing across the road it's not just an ordinary stream of water it's so cold I just had a little wriggle then as I went over it so you really do need to be careful with that stuff if you hit it cranked over you could end up having a bad day Sadly, I haven't been able to take as many photographs of this pass as the others, but to be entirely honest, I mostly wanted to enjoy the sights and above all else, enjoy the riding more than taking photos. So yeah, not a lot of picture pictureage of this one on the gram, but hopefully because of concentrating more on riding, a lot more video nonsense on the tube. That was an Energica. It's the first time I've seen one of them in real life. An Italian electric bike. Hoping at some point to have a go on one of those. But first I've got to get to the UK. And get it arranged with the English Electric Motor Company. Look at that, a Pinnerberger. Somebody that's come from further north than me. Was he not in that much of a rush though? Look at that. To be honest though, I'm really, really happy that I've made that decision with the cameras and the riding and all of that nonsense because this has been absolutely fantastic, an absolute stonker of a ride. Literally time of my life nonsense. Question is, where do I want to have a coffee? Over there or over there? I think it's got to be up there, isn't it? I'm gonna have to go and have a look at the biker point first though, on the Edelweiss Spitzer. Look at that, perfect. No buses, no camper vans. It's a bit like the Tremola. <laughs> Hairpins and switchbacks with shiny cobbles. Three of the Edelweiss Grad. There we 
back over at the top. Oh, it looks like there's someone who might be able to get a coffee here as well. My word, that would be splendid. a piece of strudel whose name I can't repeat under the watchful gaze of these quite frankly astounding mountains and the adventure continues and I've got to hustle a little bit we've only got a 45 minute buffer to get to the train so one last quick look at this magnificence and then we are smashing down the hill and on our way to Innsbruck via Kitzbühel I could probably go a bit quicker if I went direct, but who wants to go direct? And who wants to live life on the safe side? Let's have a bit of drama, shall we? That doesn't look fun. <laughs> but it also looks like the weather is actually creeping in. There's some steadily grumpier looking clouds approaching the peaks of those mountains going to have to be an overtaking machine to get there in time. Thank you. In total, we've just got 192 kilometers to cover. I mean, that's, that's, that's quite a distance. I might want to have a wee at some point in the middle of that, but 193 kilometers apparently is going to take just over four hours. But like I was saying, the going is just quite slow between main venues. Sorry, mate. Got a train to catch. <laughs> Seems so odd saying that when you're on a bike. For some reason I can't see the beeline at all now. I think the phone's overheating because of the sun. Oh, this looks ominous. Real traffic. This is not what I needed. Cheekiness extraordinaire here. Looks like he just peeked my way in. We've I mean, literally just stripped this road since I rode up. I mean, how lucky was that that I got here when I did? They've shaved this off while I was having a coffee. So by the time I get this video edited together and chucked out there, if you decide to come to the Gorsglockner, I'm sure that there'll be a brand spanking new surface on this bit. I'm pretty sure there was some guys from uh, German slash Austrian motorbike magazine here doing a photo shoot earlier on as well, and I'm guessing they were probably a bit miffed when they got told to bugger off because they were going to strip the road off. I guess there's enough, enough other bits that they could go to on there. Taking action, go. Look at that. Oh, I'm going to miss it. I've only been here for the day, but I'm going to miss it. It's like I've lived here forever. It's like an old friend. Oh, that was a good one. Now let's have it.
hairpins on this pass are just, they're actually enjoyable. They're all so smooth and round and soft and flowing. It's none of this zigzag nonsense that you get on passes like the Stilvio. I've also learned a bit of a new trick coming into these downhill hairpins. This is a bad one for an example. But see what I mean though, it's just instead of a hairpin, it's a beautiful sweeping curve with a very gradually changing radius. Love it. I do love a gradually changing radius, but I prefer it when they go from tight to wide. It's definitely not what she said. What I do is scrub the speed off with the front brake, and then when I get to the apex, switch to the rear brake so that I'm not putting too much force on the front wheel. It stops you putting weight on your elbows, through your shoulders. It means your front wheel isn't worrying about doing the braking anymore. And the back brake also tightens up your line a little bit and helps you to make it round the apex of the corner. It's brilliant. I'm sure it's common knowledge for everybody, but but I've been doing it on this trip for the first time ever in my life, and it's revolutionary. I feel like I'm some kind of a genius for having found it myself, but... Yeah. I can uh, obviously take no credit for this method, but I can recommend you give it a go when you're in the hairpins on the downhill. Because when you're rolling down, you have to put so much more braking force into the front wheel. I just find it really unsettles everything. So when you can ease off the front brake, switch onto the rear, it just changes the whole balance of the bike and guides it around the corner so much easier. Bloody hell. It's a car train. That is an interesting way to come to the course, Glockner. Whatever floats your boat. Look at that. We've gained seven minutes back with that descent so far. Let's see if we can get to the full 10 minutes by the time I get to the toll booth. Those markings on the road, incidentally, the ones with the circles that get bigger as you get closer to the apex of the corner, as far as I know, they're actually made for motorbikes. The idea is you're supposed to stay off the circles, and that means that when you're back cranked over in the bend, your head isn't going to be sticking over the centre line to make sure you don't knock it off on some tour bus coming the other way. I've probably managed to completely ignore it several times today already. Nicely done, foot out. Smell the cooked brakes. Quite sure what those lads back there were doing. Staying in a queue of traffic behind a trailer. That's, that's not what you paid with 27 euros for, mates. It's definitely not what I paid my 27 euros for, but I've got to say, I've definitely got my 27 euros worth out of this. I think in total, I've been on this bit of road four times now. No, five. It's an odd number because I'm coming back again. That is four times. Four times. Oh, look at 
of that. 13 minutes saved. I think this beeline takes into account the traffic and it's obviously registering those holdups on the hill there. So as soon as you blast past them, you've saved a couple of minutes. That's brilliant. So yeah, 13 minutes saved on the descent of the course clock now. That's a good start to this race back to Innsbruck. And that's that. That is the course clock now done. Thank you so very much for coming along with me on that little adventure. If you enjoyed yourself on that little ride, give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, like I'm not enjoying this truck in front of me, give it a thumbs down. Either way, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought, what you did and didn't like. I'll do my very best to get back to you. And hopefully I'll see you in the next episode where I continue this race against time to get to my train in time to get back to Hamburg tomorrow morning. So until then, keep your shiny and I'll see you out there. Ta -ra. Oh, this truck isn't even a truck, it's a tractor. It's just gone from bad to worse. Take advantage of that tiny little overtaking stretch. So yeah, what are you still doing here? Go away, see you next time. Goodbye.